I still remember the, the, the gaze that penetrated me up to my bone marrow. While he was speaking, I followed his gaze. It was as if the darkness of death was becoming smaller and smaller. And my heart started jumping in me. That night, that night I didn't sleep. I wanted to go and see again this case. In the morning, they, <coughs> they said he was, he, he was going to be in St. Gizito for the general assembly with the people of the movement, of which I didn't know the people of the movement. But I went there because I wanted to be the, the same that with this man. Again, I look at him speaking, and the day of my death was won. I began to see some little light in my... I wanted to follow that man. I wanted to be with Karoni everywhere he is. I wanted to be with him. My heart was jumping in me. I was merely exploding inside me. I went to Andrew Aunt Rose because I wanted to be baptized immediately. Because this was the only image that I can be with Karoni together. But she told me that she was going to tell someone to prepare me for baptism. When I went back, I found my first friends also desiring the same. What was happening in me? How our hearts burst into songs and our life became singing, singing what happened to us. We were baptized as certain girls and boys, and the journey started that day. The gaze of Karone swept away the day of my death. I was filled with songs of praise. We desire this also for our friends in the schools, where we began the church school, ourselves, our students, and certain eights of them. We are also baptized with them, with the help of Mauro and Father Ketty. We desire to communicate the beauty that we have encountered, the beauty of life that made us singing. We ask to be helped doing community school, and as we, as, as we sang, we understood better the community school. We have the we have formed the battalion of Karon, the Alpines of Uganda. We sing the Alpine songs like the Italians who went for the battle while singing. Some of us were the children of soldiers, children from different bad situation, but this situation has been won by the gays. The gays that won even death. Where are new men and women and women where I live to tell that it is possible to live this way? And I think this is Che il buio si ritiri poco a poco. I think this is actually everything that we aspire to in life. I mean, and that the darkness will gradually go away. And now we, we can listen to Caesar's experience, the, st the story of Caesar. Seven, when my parents were killed by the by the rebels in the war of the northern Uganda. One, one of my brothers was captured, and up to now, I don't know whether he's still existing or not. 
We remain two sisters and four brothers. My elder brother was living in Kampala. After the death of my parents, my brother suggested that since I was very young, I would go and stay with him in Kampala. Because the situation in the village, it was terrible and I couldn't manage it. Since the soldiers, the rebels, they, they were capturing the young people. And so there was a risk that I could be captured and taken to the bush. When I came to Kampala, I started my primary level. And in 2004, when I was finishing primary seven, unfortunately, my brother lost his job in which he was doing. So he remained jobless and I couldn't continue with my education. So we went to live in Chireka, where we thought my brother could get, could do some work in the stone quarry. My brother was working in the stone quarry, crushing stone, and we knew only the life of the village, sickness, poverty, and death. But there were some women who crushed stone singing and dancing. They were very happy. Who can be happy when he or she is hungry, sick and poor? For me, I thought these were just stupid women of the village. I thought also they were drunk. Oh, they are mad. And even they need mental treatment. But somebody told us that there were women of meeting point. And they explained to me what meeting point does. I went to meeting point. They took me to Rose. And they even knew my problems. And when I met Rose, she took me back to school. And I was so happy. The next day I went with them to meeting point and everything was okay. While I was, while I was studying, I felt hatred for those who killed my parents. Would life be there without my parents? Why should I study? Life is only living and dying. Why, why should one live if there is no happiness on earth? I was studying without an aim. Just to pass time. And I was thinking even that I was wasting money and time. Why can't I go to be trained as a soldier? Either I die on the front line, or I also kill, as they kill my parents. But meanwhile, while I was still in all these thoughts, in 2007 when Karon came to Uganda, I met him and I saw a gaze in him. And these gaze put me up and down. A gaze that seemed to put together the broken pieces of my life. If you go to Chireka, life is to work in the quarry. To be sick, for some people to steal at night. Some go back to the bush, at least you feel great with a gun. Some children go to the streets for begging, but also for stealing bags of people who come for shopping. Karon came. His gaze penetrated all this confusion. 
And it seemed to me that it was possible to follow that man. As if what was happening before never existed. Life seemed light and my heart was full of joy. Going to Rose to ask her to follow this man, I met my friend Luigi, who was excited jumping up and down. I realized what was happening to him was happening to me also, and that it was so beautiful to stay in that way. My desire and the desire of Luigi was to belong to that man. Instead of taking a taxi, I went to Rose off, off his footing because I wanted to stay in silence, to think more of what was happening to me. But as I was walking, I found myself running because I wanted to reach faster so that I may not waste time. I went to ask her to be baptized because by staying with Karon that day, I realized I was not baptized. Baptism would be the only way to unite with Karon. I wanted to be where Karon was. That is being in Christ. Rose talked of catechism classes, but for me, it would take too long. I wanted to be baptized immediately, but this was the method to reach Karon, the method to unite with Karon. So I took it simply that there was no problem, simply it was the method to unite with Karon. I embraced the catechism aptly even because I was not alone. I had found friends. We did it together, singing and dancing. Even after we were baptized, we felt so beautiful to continue with the catechism for other new friends we met at the school. In reality, we were doing it for ourselves. 39 of them were baptized on Easter night, and we became friends. Now I do not feel that I've lost my parents because I feel I have a hundred more of my parents. The situation has become, become an opportunity to encounter something that is greater. As Luigi said now, we, ha we are the Alpini of Chireka, of Uganda. I do not lose anything, but I've gained more. Many, ask, many people ask us to explain what, better what happened to us, but we cannot explain. We found our hearts jumping inside ourselves while explode in songs. They tell us to translate our songs in English in order to understand better the words. But we cannot translate the language of the mystery. We are happy to be in this way. Those who can translate, let them translate. For me, I've encountered more than a hundredfold. What else do I need?
Castro Alpino de Lugar. And now Freddy, another Alpine from Uganda. I'm Freddy Komakech, 24 years old. Uh, I'm, I'm in my second year of education in one of the universities in Uganda. It was in 1993 that the rebel came and raided our village and they took away my parents. They have uh, arrested very many people. Then they took and they went with them some five kilometers away from home. And it is from this same place where they killed them. For me, I survived only because every evening I used to go to one of the mission, uh, Catholic mission, which is around near our village. And I used to go and spend the night there, then I come and sleep, I come in the morning. So, after killing my parents, I remained nothing. I would remain with nothing apart from only my grandmother. Then a question came into my heart, that why my parents? Why? Uh, would there be any other life after my parents? And I wanted also to go and be recruited as a soldier, and I, I, I revenge because they have stolen, they have taken my parents and they have killed them. I only remained with my grandmother, and she was also weak, and the only thing that I, I should do is always to ride on a bicycle with a cassava to go and sell it for money. The distance of where I used to ride is around 44 kilometers from my home. <coughs> I, I used to do this until the time when my, my uncle who remained, he was in, in Kampala. He called me that I should come and stay with him. Then I came and stayed with him, but where he was living, the only place was to, to earn living, you have to, uh, to crush stones. And I also began with him the, the work in the stone quarry. Unfortunately, they stopped him from operating in a certain place where he was by a certain group of people who claim over that land. Then I remained with nothing again. Even earning the daily living was another problem since we were have not having any other thing. Even my going to school ended. And I stayed at home until the time when a certain man was looking for someone to work in a film hall. <clears throat> so I went there asking for him to, to be uh, to employ me. Fortunately, yeah, he, he said the following morning you come and start working. I, I became so happy. I said now I've got the, the job. Now I can sustain my daily living. Then that very day when I, I, I began the work, I almost regretted why I went and asked for that job. Because the people who attended that video hall on that day, they were only my friends who went out without giving me even a single coin. I, I said, it's better I stop here. Then I said, okay, let me try the following morning. Maybe I'll all see. Then when time goes on, it was really another hell. Because the people who used to come, if I'm to estimate, because the, the 80% were only my friends who comes and watch without paying, giving me money. The 10%, they come and watch, then they promise me that they will give me the money the following day. And some of, some of them have not even given me the money up to today. Maybe they will give it. I'm still waiting. 
another 10% they are almost willing to give me a half of what I was charging for the film hall. And my friend, if I'm to tell you, the work in the film hall is another mess. Because in a film hall is where you get all kind of people. The drunkards, the every kind of people. The people who come, come with the intention of fighting to one another. And I was so worried when I was still working in that film hall, I thought maybe they will also come and fight to me because I'm the one operating the place. Luckily, when I was still in the film hall, someone came and spoke to me about Rose and Meeting Point. Then I said, I, I should go and see this Rose that they are talking about and the meeting point. I went to meeting point to see Rose. I was, I was imagining that I will go and see, I find a, a, a big boss in the office and I will talk to, to her. But surprisingly, I reached meeting point. I found her mixed up with, with the women and she was dancing with the women. Then I asked, is this one the, 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 the boss of meeting point? Then they, they, they said yes, and I, I even found that I have ever seen her before, only that I never talked to her before. When I told her my problem, she said I should go back to school. I went back to school, I thought maybe going to school was enough to me. Then reaching school, I was not still happy. And one day she, she met us, the old people whom she's paying, and she was talking a lot of beautiful things, only that out of all the beautiful things that she was talking, I only picked one. That when she said, I have got a value, and this value that I have is not more than, or it is not less than, the value of someone who is a second to death. Then this word value, it provoked me. I said, I need to discover this value. I need to discover it. And it is from this point that I started following her. I started, she invited us for the School of Community. By the way, for the first time, I thought I was um, among some other people whom I'm not understanding. Because understanding the words of the school of community, if you are the first time, it is not so easy. Then I remember the, the year of 2007 that Father Caron visited Uganda and he went to meeting point. We also went to meeting point. For me, going to meeting point to, to listen to Father Caron was like to listen to a pop. And the way he looked at me, the gaze that I saw from his face, it was different from even the one of Aunt Rose. I said, who is this man who has got this kind of case, who has got this kind of look? It is better I follow this man, I discover what is in this man, what is making him have got this kind of case. And everything changed in my, in my life. And that day became a turning point in my life. I started following this phase, to whom I encountered Christ. And from that day, I came, I realized that encountering Christ was everything in my life. And through encountering Christ, I've encountered my, my parents. Now, I don't have, I don't lack anything in my life. I have got everything because since Christ is everything to me, I've got everything. And 
my only prayer is that I should have this the simple heart to follow this ideal, to follow Christ. And it is through Caron and Antiros that I'm following Christ. And I don't want I don't want to leave them. I want always to be with them. I want to be where they belong. I want to be where they belong. And I only pray to Christ that He should He should use me in any way He wants. Since He is the one giving me my my breath in every instant. I don't have anything in my life but only my yes to him. Thank you so much. Uh, Deogratius Droma Adrawa. I, I, I am uh, 26 years now. I, I come from the north part of uh, Uganda, a district called Moyo. My father died when I was still uh, very young. I was only 12 years old. And by then I was still doing my primary seven. So after, after my father had died, um, uh, because uh, when, when, when your father dies, all the relatives come up there and they arrange what they should do about what has happened. So then uh, they decided that uh, my mother should agree that uh, we should all be taken back to the village. Because my father was a soldier, and, uh, and, and, and by them, since uh, he had died, we could not even stay in the army barracks. The, we needed to get out of the army barracks and go to begin a new living. So when, uh, when, when we were organizing so that he would go and be buried, actually he, he even died from the, from the village because... Uh, I, I, I asked myself why they couldn't keep him to suffer with the sickness in Kampala where there was even better treatment. But then when you are still young it is in, in Africa, okay, in Uganda, it is that you don't, due to a lot of respect to the parents, you don't really ask a lot of questions. And uh, you know what you are supposed to know at that age and what you are not supposed to know, you don't have the right to ask it. So I didn't ask a lot of these questions, and uh, he happened to die from the village. And uh, when the news reached us that he had died, we had to organize to go to the village and to see his burial. Since uh, to move from Kampala to, to Moyo, my home district, is like 400 kilometers, it takes more than eight hours to travel there and a lot of expenses involved, we found ourselves reaching late two days after he was buried. Uh, we just went, saw where he was buried, and then later on there were these meetings where we were shown to the different relatives where we were supposed to be brought up. In, uh, in my culture, when the husband dies, the woman and the children were a belonging of the husband so he he has got the right to assign them to whoever he wishes so first of all my father was a polygamous man and he had uh, he had three women and with other two women he had one child each and then with my mother he had four children my mother was like the main housewife 
of course after getting my mother he divorced all the other women so he had assigned all the other children that he didn't have with my mother to different relatives to take care after and uh, so they had to to remain in the village with those relatives they then my mother insisted that at least these relatives could leave her so that she returns with us to Kampala and at least we completed only the primary level of our education so that then she would take us to the village and uh, she would obey them to this they agreed and uh, they let us go back to the village to Kampala and as we were staying in Kampala even before the year ended at different times I realized that my mother was sobbing crying bitterly and uh, these sobs were because uh, the other time she was hearing the property was sold the other time she was hearing that the house that my father had built for us was sold the other time she was hearing that the land was also being sold so at the end we realized that everything was gone everything that my father had left us with was pos was taken care of and whichever relative they left it with had the right to sell it and to use it for their own wish so sooner or later when we had completed our primary seven my my mother re rejected to take us to the village as they had suggested they kept uh, uh, they kept harassing her calling her very disobedient they even wanted to disown her but then she told us she couldn't care all that she cared about were his children were her children in fact after some time she went and even requested that even those other brothers and sisters that we had left in the village be brought back and stay with her because they were my brothers and my sisters although she was not the one who directly gave birth to them then uh, later when uh, they were all brought to stay with us in Kampala she she continued to pay for our school fees because she had a small she had a small petty trade but then when I had uh, when I had reached my senior four the demands grew more bigger because I am born in a family of six children three girls and three boys and she could not afford to pay for all the school fees then after my senior four we all stayed home then since uh, we needed to leave to to live in Kampala is a little bit more expensive than staying in the village we 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 started going to the quarry to to break the stones where you excavate and break them and sell them and this is what we used to do to earn a living then uh, in 2005 I uh, I heard that the meeting point was uh, it was registering new new youths so that they would be taken back to school I ran and also registered since in the beginning for me life was life was all about working to disappoint these relatives because uh, the more I studied, the more successful I became, the more I would disappoint them. Because had I gone to the village, surely there was no hope for education. There would be no hope for a good life. So when I went to meeting point and there was this chance to continue with my education, I saw that my ambitions were arose once more. But before we were assigned to the different schools in, in which we were supposed to be taken, 
we had a meeting with uh, the with the director of meeting point and uh, in this meeting i thought she was just going to tell us now you you go to this school you you go to this other school Deo, you go to this other school but then she began with something different from the school and she she asked us but you people what 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 are your rights the, this was a very easy question for me because uh, in ugandan schools once we are brought up we are taught to to sing these things you you have got the right to education you have got the right to shelter where to stay you have got the right to food to eat all of these rights so when they were very easy for me to mention and since i was the first to put up my hand i began mentioning them and 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 every other time she kept encouraging so that i would speak the next right that i knew then at the end of them all she asked me so what it was a very simple question but i felt very disappointed immediately within that second i looked at her like somebody who doesn't respect my rights and and if you don't respect my rights you don't you don't respect my well-being i felt bitter within me but then as 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 she continued among us the very many things that she told us because for surely speaking the words she spoke i first of all i could not even understand them i was even biased by the fact that she had uh, she had asked me so what about my rights but then one word that i stuck into my mind was the fact that she said i am a value that 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 i have a value so i th i thought that this was a consolation the the following day i was meant to go to her office and and, and when i went to her office i asked her about this value because i thought she was just uh, caressing me after harassing me with my rights but then she explained these rights and i realized that the fact is that i have the rights i have the rights only if i realize that i am a value i didn't understand much but uh, she she concluded inviting me to to go with her because at the end at the end of that day in her office i demanded that i should have a way of perceiving things like her then she invited me to go back to her office on a friday i i did not miss out i was very early on a friday afternoon then i thought that we would begin from where we had ended but then she got out hymn books and we began singing every other time we sang one song i expected i expected she would explain more about this value but then she chose another song then at the end of the songs she told me we have to go I, I couldn't ask where are we going where are you taking me 
because I still had it within me that uh, a disciplined African child cannot ask why straight away. So I went with her in the car and we drove up to a place where we got people meeting, waiting for her. Uh, she told me to, to lead them in the song that she had chosen. Of course, I was panicking, but we sang it. Then they, they spoke of things that I did not understand. But uh, at that point for me, what struck me was that there were people there. And Aunt Rose was also there whom I admired to be like. So that alone gave me joy for that day. Then later on, she told me that that was the school of community. So I kept on going to the school of community uh, since uh, I, I, I knew that she was there. But for me, I, I didn't understand it more. No, not until the same event with my friends when Karon came to Uganda. that I was pushed to go and ask a question. And this question was about the solitude. Because reading from the School of Community, this, this statement said that there is, there is nothing that can satisfy us. This was again contradictory to mine. Because for me, at one time I needed happiness and I think I had got it. I was out of school, I needed, the, I needed school fees and I got it. So I went in this, in this general assembly and asked Father Caron this question. And then she asked me back and said, Now are you satisfied? And without, I said, yes, yes, I am satisfied. Then she said, now you don't need anything more? Then I said, no, I need much more than before. Then she said, that, that is the point. And within that second, I was helped to realize my life. The, the fact that from the beginning with my mother it was primary seven uh, and then after my senior four it was yet still another step so for me to realize that there was this man who tells me about myself I fell in love to follow Because I was helped to understand myself. Actually, this was a new spring of life. And when I realized that my friends had also been moved the same way, I ran immediately to join them to do their catechism. I had been baptized, but I had fallen out. But this was a fresh spring from which life sprang. And it was a new way for me to live. It was a new way for me to live within the same circumstances, the different circumstances that my friends lived. Be because my, within my friends are people who are child soldiers, either sick, sick with HIV AIDS, orphans but this was a new way for me to live and all the other circumstances did not matter because what mattered is that I had begun realizing myself and with this man I even began understanding the school of community better the words that I thought were difficult became simpler 
simply because uh, just to belong where he is I, I even I even admired more the antiros that I wanted to be like before like and in turn even the singing also became better because initially we would sing but we would sing for nobody but after encountering this man we knew that we were singing for somebody greater and to understand the school of community much more better I, I you will just allow me to quote one incident that happened recently when, when we were reading the school of community ab ab about the fact that Jesus embraces me with my nothingness I, I, I told Aunt Rose I told Aunt Rose that uh, for me sometimes I leave him as aside uh, and go to do my other things and then I come back to meet him but then Antiros told me, no, you are the one who, leave, who leaves him, but, but he doesn't leave you. Even when you're doing a lot of bad things, he is there with you. I felt much more ashamed. I was helped to remember all the bad things that I did thinking that I had left him aside and I was doing the, the things and I would come back later to meet him to realize that he is always there with me it was I mean a new life I fell in love with everything then right now I live with my friends in the same house But I, I take them my first priority. Uh, I, I, I earn, for instance, a little bit much more money than uh, my two friends who are working. And the other are students. But even though I know that my mother needs the money much more than they need it, I cannot take the money to my mother when I know that I live with them and they don't have what to eat. They have become my first priority in my life. And the people in the village where I am li living, they ask what is it that makes us. We cannot explain. This is the life that we are living. Dennis, I'm called Dennis. I'm 23 years old now. Uh, right now, I'm doing statistics at the university. I, I lost my mother when I was eight months old. I never got a chance to see her face to face. My father died when I was 10 years old. And I, I have a brother. We got confused. We didn't know what to do. And, uh, and our relatives who were there instead wanted us to go in the village and dig in their garden or clean their houses like houseboys. But uh, this was not something that we desired in our lives at all. So somebody came in to help us. Rose came in to our door when we had no hope at all. I had no hope. I thought I would not go anywhere. 
but even when she got me she she asked me but what do you want to be what do you want to do I told her I want to study hard I want to get money I want to be a big person and to do to go for degree masters PhD and be very rich in the whole world but she told me Dennis look you are infinite this can't satisfy you even if you have PhD masters or money this will never satisfy you at all if you think I'm kidding you go and try it at school So I went to school, I started my statistics, but I uh, remember she picked me when I was 10 years old. So even in all this time that I was with Rose, she would tell me all these things, but I thought she was joking, that I'm infinite. So I go to the university. I began studying, I found there's something missing in me, I'm not yet satisfied, I feel there's something in me missing. Then I ask her, but why, why is it that even after passing very with good grades, I have passed all my secondary, I have passed my secondary, I have very good grades, even at the university I'm passing, but still I'm not very happy. Then she brought back the same thing, you are infinite. But I would not understand this, so I thought I would go to, I chose to go to a Protestant church to see, to find out a solution to this kind of desires of my heart. I thought going in a Protestant church would satisfy my desire and I would, I would be much better. I had friends who were Protestants, so I, I went to their church there. But I, I found that their teaching is quite much different. They're telling me I'll be fine when I go up, when I go to heaven. But now, I don't need to worry about this kind of things. But for me, instead, I wanted to be fine. How can I, I would ask myself, how can I be fine in heaven, yet here I'm not fine. I don't think God wants me to be like this. But my other friends, they insisted they went to a Protestant church, but still they were also not happy. Then in 2007, Karon came to Uganda. But uh, I had not known him at all. But other people knew him and they were going there. They told me they are going to fall, they are going to meet somebody. I got interested, I said, but I want to go, so I want to know this Karon, everyone is mentioning Karon, Karon, who is Karon? I went, but I went as a joke to see who this Karon is. So I went and sat inside there as everyone is seated here. So Karon began to speak. When he spoke, for me, it was like an open door in my life. I was in the first place not happy, very many desires. But when he spoke to me, I listened to him again. I couldn't believe because I've, I've met people of that kind of age but they still can't speak this kind of words when you would say that Christ is everything and Christ satisfies everyone who accepts him who embraces him I thought this was a joke then I said but why can't I why can't I say yes to this? I 
I had to say yes. When I said yes immediately, I found satisfaction. But only through falling Caron, I had not understood this thing without following him. Then I went back home, I found Freddy, Deo, Luigi, and Caesar looking at them and their, their, their whole life has been the same like mine but they are also very happy and excited as if everything is complete in life. The whole humanity had changed. While other people are looking at uh, money and working hard uh, like, uh, like money is something that can satisfy, for them they are saying only Christ. You can do other things but you need to accept only Christ. In this moment I felt no longer an orphan and I have more than an orphan can have in his life but even other orphans if you tell them this they may not understand this and Karon can say the only thing that can give peace is true peace my heart felt felt like burning. I couldn't understand what this meant. I belong to a family that is much bigger. This is the movement. Even a hundredfold really can't satisfy me. Only Christ who gives the hundredfold can satisfy this. But in the first place I thought getting a hundredfold would be everything. But I discover lately it's not a hundredfold that can satisfy me. It's Christ who gives me the hundredfold. But even at the university where I study, I'm always teased by my university professors. There's a university professor who knows that um, I'm a Christian, I, I attend the movement meeting, and he would tell me, but uh, you're following Christ who doesn't exist. You can't show me even Christ now. Then he would say, but uh, you're, following, you're going in a Christianity which is not real, and Christianity is just a walking stick. It's helping you who are crippled and you can't walk at all. To me this was very annoying and I looked at him, I said, how can you say Christianity that I believe in is a walking stick in my heart? I, I told him, fine, but you call it a walking stick, but for me it helps us move as Christian, but for you who doesn't believe in this, you can't move, you're stagnant in one place. He was very bitter. He removed his specs and looked at me and he said, you're being very indisciplined, you don't respect, you don't answer like this, you are very African, you need to be submissive, you need to submit to me. I... But uh, to me, I, was, I looked at him as somebody who is trying to play with my humanity, telling me that Christianity is a walking stick helping me to walk, but yet this is what helps me move. Him who doesn't have it is not working. I, I don't know what happened really after some other days. I think it's like he sent other people to come and tease me again. He sent a, a, a fellow student this time to test me, I think. He came very rich with driving very nice car, Mercedes. And, and told me, but look, you are in this thing of Christianity, they will not take you anywhere. There's, in, there's an opportunity here. We are offering seven virgins for you, and you, you can go to Dubai also. There are opportunities of work free, uh, in, in, 
the fact that you're doing statistics and you have good grades, they really want people like you. If you want women, there are seven virgins also for you. We can get for you nice jobs and you get dollars, you get paid very fast and big figures of money. To me, everything was moving very fast and in a very unrealistic way. Offering me seven virgins, I didn't ask for seven virgins. I don't think seven virgins will make me happy, not even satisfy me. Hey, this, this young man got shocked and couldn't believe it. went back and said, I think the other, the other guy is, doesn't function. How can he say he, doesn't, he can't take seven virgins and can't go for money? He's not human. But he was shocked because other students accepted his ideas and followed him and others went to Dubai with hope of seven virgins, with hope of dollars. Then the next day I, I got to my lesson, I entered late for lectures. The professor was inside already. I, the class was quiet and he welcomed me, hey handsome boy, young man, you're welcome. Hey, tell me, which girl is nice for you here? I looked at him and said, I didn't come for girls. I'm happy. He was married, he had a ring. I told him, now you're married, you have a ring. Are you very happy? He was annoyed, he just moved out of class. After now, we had a very big misunderstanding with him. But all this is because I got this kind of teaching from Caron in the first place. It made me discover myself fully. Thank you. adesso Rosa non chiediamo cosa ha voluto dire per lei and now Rose maybe you can tell, uh, tell us about the meaning for you uh, what it meant for you meeting them So when uh, Father, when Father Giussani selected Caron as his substitute, well, he had come, but I, I mean, I had full confidence in Don Giussani, and I obeyed, and I then followed uh, Caron. Then after the death of Father Giussani, it seemed to me that my world had come to an end. And then I continued looking looking to Caron as the new father Giussani, his replacement, the new boss. And then Caron came to Uganda and then, uh, I mean, all the events depicted by the boys took place. You have to think that after after the encounter with Caron, I met Luigi, who told me I haven't been baptized as yet. And then, he, and I asked why, what did he say, although I was there. And then I thought to myself, I know these boys, and I mean, they will get over it. And I told them, go away, I will think about it. Then, one day later, Caesar 
comes up to me, sweating all covered with dust because he had been walking a very long distance in the dust. And he told me, uh, looking at that man, I found out that I haven't been baptized yet. And then I thought to myself, what's going on here? And then what did Caron say? I mean, I was there, there was my home, there many other people. What did he say? What was the word? And three days later, four days later, uh, or four days later, f four or five people were asking the same question. And then locked up in my office, I was, I was asking them, tell me the word, tell me the sentence. But then looking at them, I, I found that they were completely different, not the boys that I've been caring for. Now, I've been mentioning the community school, God, uh, the children. Now, Caron comes here for 30 minutes, finding out that you have not been baptized. Amazing. Now, which God did I talk to you about? And looking at them, I found that they were completely different. And I was actually wondering, is this true or not? And then I, I went on working with them. Then Annie invited a woman to hold the catechism lessons for them. And then and after this after this lessons the lady was absolutely happy and she said, I mean, I want to work with these boys more and more so that they can be baptized. And again I was wondering what's going on here? They were all mentioning a sentence by Caron. And I would ask everybody whether there was a point dealing with the baptism. But actually, Caron had never mentioned baptism. And, and also, Caron had not encountered them directly. He had only had a chat with the nun that was accompanying them. I mean, uh, things were not clear for me, but it was obvious and evident that something had happened. They were also curious, also enthusiastic. They were obviously a step forward. They were actually surfing the net to find out everything about see L and learning all the um, the songs of the Alpines etc and that's why I started I started wondering why is it that first they want to go to the quarry to see the women breaking the stone and once they said let's go to the quarry so that we can sing these Alpine songs for these women so that they can take a break So they would go there to the quarry, mill, and the women would employ the same hammers that they used to break the stone. So all of them singing together. And then I said to myself, I have to be here looking for the words and sentences spoken by Caron. It's a mystery, I mean... Uh, I mean, I wasn't worried, actually, but all the people were wondering, is this true? What happened here? And people were telling me, don't worry. You have cared for them. They have taken the first steps. But then I was telling myself, I don't mind uh, if I have cared for them because they have changed. They are now different people. But, and I had to sing along with them, actually, learning the Alpine chants, the Alpine songs. And, 
and whenever they would find out something new about Don Giussani uh, I would finding it out with them anything new and then I said they changed I mean they were they deeply changed looking to Carron and then I, I thought uh, also my own gaze my own face had changed so I started looking to Carron but no longer just as Carron but in a different way and while I was looking at w what Caron was looking at uh, w we were becoming one only thing I mean one thing united Caron and the thing that was looked at so Caron depicting Christ uh, and this was all very natural. It was actually taking place. And then I started looking at Aaron no longer just as the boss, but rather at, at the thing that Caron was looking at. And that changed actually my position. Now I look to him as if I was looking at the same point that he is looking at so I become the same thing, I become one thing with him and this is thanks to the fact that I, I saw something happening Luigi who was telling that I mean people were upset when they had to sing along the Alpine songs and then and who can possibly translate the language of mystery what is the language of mystery so I wanted to have the same gaze as Caron's so he is no longer the boss, he is now a companion, I mean he is my guiding companion My dear friends, don't go away. We have a surprise for you at the end. Please be patient. I mean, isn't it amazing what we have just heard? Life can be very easy. Life can be simple. I mean, I don't mean to say that life is easy. Is is something else, actually. Look at their experience or look at your own life. Life is never easy, but life can be very simple. God loves us. That's why our human nature is something very simple. Because we have our heart, we have our desire for happiness, I mean, we are looking for fulfillment, and He is there to provide us with answers. How? Well, thanks to an encounter. Aunt Rose, for them, or just a gaze, Caron's gaze. It's been mentioned several times. But it's not Caron that matters. What matters is what is he looking at? And that's actually the starting point. That's the first step of our human adventure. The meeting, the encounter of our heart with Christ. It's the beginning, but then there is more to it. There's an ongoing work. There is a, there is a, a battle. It's a very daunting task. It requires energy, commitment, effort. 
and then it goes on exactly the same way as it started. I mean, they encountered rows, they followed rows, and rows is now following them. So we keep following actually the same approach. We keep following and we follow on being simple and then you see the power, the strength that emerges from this first encounter. You see here that how powerful our yes can be. You have all listened to their uh, stories. Darkness disappearing, fragments getting together again, the importance of every single second in our life. I have now everything because I have found out the meaning of life. I am no longer an orphan. I am no longer alone. Do we want anything else in life or just this? As I said, life is easy. Life is simple, rather. Sometimes we complicate life with all our diets, with what, if, but. Sometimes we keep raising doubts, uh, but on the contrary, life can be very simple. Although there is a but which could actually uh, endanger everything that has been told so far. It's the but when we say but this happened to them. When we say but this is their story. This took place in their difficult lives in Africa. We could think but it was and this is actually the worst way that we have to actually um, overlook uh, what God has provided us with. Because if it happened to them with this strength, this is also there to mean how important our lives are, to underline how important I I it is to see what is going on in our lives. I mean, the importance of these testimonies uh, lies exactly in this. We, it, it is meant to enable us to know more and understand more about ourselves and our nature. They will be here, they will be here throughout the, for the entire week. There is a specific stand of the meeting point Kampala here at the Rimini meeting. And I think many of you will go to them to talk to them, to know more, to ask them questions, to pursue this first encounter. Please do. Please feel free to meet up with them. Go and see them. Go and talk to them. Talk to them uh, as if they were your friends so that you can discuss about the challenges in your life. Somebody who is there to help you and maybe provide you with answers, share your experience, go and talk to them as if you were talking to friends. They are friends. I mean, these people are not here talking about the stories and then disappear. They are here to help us to understand what is going on in our lives. So they are friends and they now have a present for us. I mean, we mentioned the Alpini, the Alpines in Uganda, but I mean, it was not there's more to it. There's something very concrete. So you will see now the Ugandan Alpines materializing. And Don Luigi Giussani obviously insisted on the importance of singing in life, singing the beauty of life. We can now listen to them live singing and see how important is the presence of God in their life. Here they are singing for us. I hope that technically that our sound engineers will help us to... I think you have to go to a different microphone actually over there. Alpina ad honorem.
Quale? Quello, ok, scusate. Scusate, scusate, vedete, vedete dove arriva la bellezza del cristianesimo? Now, yet another example of the beauty of Christianity. I mean, this is actually beauty that we have to surrender to. Please surrender to the same beauty throughout this week. Enjoy this week at the Rimini meeting. Thank you very much.